G'day, how you all going everybody? This is Ian Harris from Australia here, or AKA Ianapolis, your acrylic guru. Did you see that um, painting on the opening credits? All right, that big fiery sky and the fields cascading down to the front of the canvas there. Well, that's what we're gonna paint today on my canvas here. So we're gonna do it in acrylic and um, there are the sizes of the canvas board that I'm going to use, okay? 30 centimetres by 42 centimetres. And as usual, getting them all the way up there are the colours we're going to use in this painting today. So without further ado, or before we do do the further ado, I will like to have a mouthful of my cold coffee. You know why I'm using cold coffee today? Because cold coffee is a type of coffee that can't be neglected. Where when you've got a hot coffee, you love that taste of a nice warm hot coffee and when you've neglected it and it's gone cold, it's just a bit down. So I'm having a cold one today. All right, so I've got a display screen going here as well. I'll just show you over there. Of the picture that's inspired me to do today's painting. Now, I'm not going to put all these fruit and veggies in the front here. I want to just use the foreground and the sky for my inspiration from this picture to do our painting today. So I've got all my colours ready to do this sky. And can you see how they're all blended and creaming together and merging and blending? That's our main aim today is to get that happening on our canvas, all right? And then we'll just do a simple foreground field over here. All right, so that's going to be our reference picture or subject picture. Now, I've had a few people telling me or asking me and commenting saying, um, you painted a painting exact to the reference picture. Why would you call it a reference picture if you're painting it to an exact T? Well, some pictures are a reference. You're not painting them exact. And some pictures you're using as a subject picture. So there's two, a subject picture in my mind and a reference picture, okay? So this one is a, a reference picture. I'm only using parts of it. Where if you're using a picture and you're gonna paint the whole thing exact, that's your subject picture. Just thought I'd say that to those people that like to get on me back and give it a bit of a whipping, but that's all right. Can't have everyone loving you. All right, so we're going to get, we'll, we'll get you down here on my palette and I'll get some colors starting for this. And there's not that many in this, all right? So come down here. Now, that coffee can't stay there, so we'll get rid of that. There we go, can't have that in a way. And what we'll do is we'll get some, paints going onto the palette here. So first I want to start off with my liquid white. There we go, look at that. And um, also we, we, we want this to have uh, clear, medium retarder. So we'll put some retarder down here as well. There she is, we've got a nice clear puddle of medium retarder. First things first with this procedure, like I always do. Now to get that beautiful cream smoothing melting blending, We've got our raw canvas, or it's a gesso prime canvas, whatever you bought from the shop. It's the way you bought it from the shop. Now we've got our squirty bottle of water. We're gonna mist it, mist up some water on there. And grabbing a brush. You know what I might do first, just to be something different? I'm gonna get some retarder on my brush. I'll put some on the board there. And I'm gonna put a coat of this retarder on mainly on the top half of the canvas here. I'm not worried about too much at the bottom here. I've mainly concentrated it on the top. So there we've got a nice amount of clear medium retarder on there. Now if you come down to the palette again, we have the retarder and we're mixing it with the white flow paint and we want to prime that board up, the top half. Okay, so we'll get this on. This is the trick to get a beautiful, melted, soft looking, merging blend. Now, like I said, we're not gonna to concentrate too much down the bottom there. It's mainly the top, as you saw into that reference picture. 
All right, so I've put that on and I'm evening off the brush strokes. I haven't left them all scratched and pushed on and, you know, all over the place. It's a nonsense. You don't want it like that. So you virtually... See, this will stay wet for quite a while, considering it's acrylic. But depending on your climate as well, you've got to work within your climate's temperature. Now looking at our reference picture there, we've got yellows and oranges and some sienna colour here and white, okay? So I'm gonna get those onto the palette. I've got my cadmium yellow medium, I've got my red gold. If you don't have red gold, you can have an orange, mix up an orange. And I've got a uh, raw sienna dark. So now I wanna get the yellow. I wanna use my blending brush and my, like I'm doing a cloud, so I'm gonna grab the yellow now this paint needs retarder in it as well because it's all going to be blended, all right? I'll just put it. So I'm getting the yellow on my fan brush and we, wanna, we know we're gonna have our sun about here somewhere. So I'm gonna start, I don't want it to creating the yellows out into the sky. Just like that. Sort of spider webbing it out. Just like that. So this white paint underneath has retarder in it. And this paint that I just put on has retarder in it. And that's going to be blended into all that white. So we'll grab a blending brush. Now the trick with blending, blend and wipe onto a paper towel as you blend it because you're picking up paint. And don't blend too heavy and hard. Try and practice your blending until you know you've worked out the secret that works for you. So you want things all open and closed. And we're gonna blend all this. We'll put some whites back into this later. We've got to get that yellow gold in there. So I want to quickly wipe your brush, get all this blending done into that white. And see how it's allowing this yellow to be softly blended into that white? That's great. Now we're going to pick up the yellow gold with retarder mixed through it, or orange if you don't have yellow gold. All right. Now we'll get the basis of all this scratched into the where the it's going to meet the yellow do a bit at a time if you want to be careful I've cleaned that blending brush and I'm gonna I want to blend all this into that yellow look at that see how beautiful it melts into there and do this one here Try not make your patterns too uniform if you can help it. Like you don't want them all like V's. You want them sort of different and artistic and fiery. This is gonna be a fire sky, so we want it quite fiery looking. Now we're gonna pick up some more of that. We gotta get it right in here. Because this is going to have some darks in it. So I'm just using the fan brush. See how I'm just simply putting it on and oozing it down in there. Mixing it with the yellow there. Coming down here. And it's twisting. Not very hard. Find your pressure. Twist and turn your brush around. Have fun with it. Wipe your brush. See, I'm just banging it on the paper towel there. And see this, it's not dry, this is acrylic, but it's still moist and wet and it's able to work like a oil paint. You got time, if you're inside, to blend it and merge it into those other colors. So you watch this. I love the way this retarder works. 
Look at that, it's just melting that yellow gold into that yellow. Red gold, sorry. So see how easy that was using the retarder. We've coated the canvas with white flowing paint to allow all this to happen. Now I want to pick up some of the raw sienna dark, which has retarder in it as well. And I'm going to use this on my fan brush to apply it. Now I'm not going to know until I put it on there if this is going to be dark enough or not. We'll find out. Now I want some dark underbelly bits and pieces here, just there. that to blend into that orangey stuff so just so we're getting some darker aspects into our sky okay over here I'm just sort of like I would do a cloud. But we're blending this into the red gold or your orange, so to speak. Just so we've got some dark values and depth in this fire sky, the way it is in the picture there. I've got a bit of burnt sienna because I'm not quite happy with the depth of that one so I'm going to add a bit of burnt sienna probably mix it with this as well a little bit just to get those darker values and we'll bring some over here you can do this in any color sky really this is just the colors of this one that made that picture look appealing to me now I don't know who that picture belongs to. If I ever found out, I'd love to give them credit. Um, someone posted it somewhere, but there was no ownership's name with it, so it's a bit unfortunate. And we'll get some sort of little bits here and there. Just some nice. See, with the blending, it's just a matter of twisting it and finding your way with it. Um, probably got to, I'll go back over that bit because I wasn't quite happy with that. That's it. All right, we've lost a bit of our red gold, so now we're just back to putting some of the red gold back into it. So we'll stamp it on, leaving those dark ones where we got them, twisting it around, sort of like you've seen me do clouds. Grab your blending brush and this will create the darker piece there, that brown bit that was on. We can put this red gold back, merge it with that yellow. Getting our fire sky happening. Now what you can do also, watch what a bit of white does. Let's just say here maybe. Not that you need to, but sometimes white breaks up your um your your blending. You don't have to do this, I'm just showing you. Because we're going to have that white intense piece in the middle here. Let's 
kind of soften those bits around the glary area, which is going to have the big white glare. Well, we're getting there. Now we want that intense white bit right over here. So I'm going to use my pouncer and I've got some good quality white down here. So my pouncer's bone dry. I'll give it a bit of a squirt. And then I want to pick up this white and massage it into the whatever. There's so many different types of pouncers you can get. Let's get some that a bit wetter. Now this has no, this is a good quality white. It, it's the paint that's up there's still got retarder in it. Now we want to find our glary spot, which is here. Okay, there she is. Now I'm going to dance that around and fade it into all that sky there. This is the best way to get a glare participating out into your blended sky, I find. You do it any way you like. I'm going to pick up some more white and intensify that again. I'm using this as a brush. Now lightly come out here and then I'm going to grab my blending brush, which I've cleaned. And I want to blend this white now into the yellow, soften it, blend it all into those colors there. So we're keeping the intense piece in the middle. We've got enough retarder on there that's still working. And we've blended that into those other colors there. If you want, grab some more white and intensify it. Wipe your brush and blend it. Now um, I'm just going to grab some yellow and then put the yellow and bring that yellow into that white. So we want to blend that yellow back into where it's got to go, this side. And then we're going to blend it into that white. So the yellow and the white. And then we might have to come back again and intensify that white again. But we're doing it in sections and in layers so everything's working and blending beautifully. So there we go. All right, now I want to intensify that again. There we go. Wipe the brush and then merge that yellow and that white together again. Now just to finish it, I'm touching up bits of the yellow into these darker colors, not too much, just to sort of soften it and I've just done that bit up there as you can see because sometimes when you add other colors over others you you're losing the first section of it so it's a matter of going back and redoing a layer that got damaged to create another layer that's pretty much what I'm doing here so we've got all these colors now that that retard has been able to help us blend and merge on such a beautiful, soft, artistic way. I'll bring you in closer and show you. Okay. All right, we're getting there. We've got the sky done, okay? That's pretty much to the um, picture there. It's, it's not exact, but it's similar. It's given us an idea of how we're going about it. Now I'm going to blow dry this now because I'm not going to need to do any more blending with that and if I'm going to put my foreground in I don't want it to mud up and mix and frustrate the hell out of me okay so take the time to have a look at the links in the description below I'm going to put a link to my Facebook so people can find me on Facebook and follow me there and there's a link to my Patreons page as well if you want to support my content you can click on the Patreons link and follow the prompts to support me there okay now, um, yeah, like I said, have a drink of your coffee and whatnot. So we'll blow dry this. Okay, so we're gonna use some black gesso now and, and um, I'll create the background for our mountain. And as you can see there, we've got our sky. 
So now we'll create the foreground. Now the best way to put your gesso on, in my opinion, is grab yourself a flat brush. If you haven't got a set of these in your arsenal, go and buy yourself some. And I'm just gonna use it out of the pot. All right, so, and why I wanna use a flat brush is we can get the top of it nice and sharp, which is what we want. So, where can you see there? Just to the shape of the hill. We'll get the top in first, which is nothing complicated or extravagant. Maybe bring another one there. I want to get that a bit better there. That's it, we've got a nice sharp edge. And then we can just grab the rest of our gesso. This is a real simple painting for beginners and it's an eye-catching one too. Now that's done, blow dry. Alrighty, things are looking good, feeling good and smelling good. We're ready to put our foreground colours on there. Hey, the other day, last week actually, I was down the local shopping centre and I saw an Aboriginal... Let me get this off there. I saw an Aboriginal sitting down on the bench selling Aboriginal art. His wife or his girlfriend, Aileen Garlett, does all these Indigenous paintings in Western Australia. And um, what was his name? Harry. Harry goes around everywhere selling her art. So some of you West Australian people or even Australian people are familiar with her work there. But there's a piece there I bought. $25. That was very, very cheap. You know, so good on the Garlets. Aileen Garlett for her wonderful artwork. And also, I want to thank um, a Christine from the chair doctor in Malaga here down the road from where I live because I needed a new office chair and she helped me out very, very dearly with the nice, beautiful chair that I was happy with. So thank you very much, Christine from the chair doctor in Malaga. All right, now we're going to get some greens. What greens do you want? Do you want, I mean, they've got very light greens in the um, picture there. But you can either go dark, light, mediums, whatever tickles your fancy, or you can have it a purple theme. But we're going to stick with the greens anyway, so I'm going to go for, um, what do we say, some, some yellow greens, always beautiful. And get that towel roll out of the way. Some yellow green, mouth full of the coffee. Oh, look at that. I've just noticed a little light glare in that little ditch there that worked out perfectly. Um, Australian sap green. Yeah, maybe some sap green. So we'll use that as our darker green over this one. And uh, first I would like to put in our footpath. So I need a yellow oxide and yellow. Actually, I've got a Australian sienna here. It's, I think it's, look at that. I think... I think it might be pretty much a yellow oxide colour. I like the colour of it. So we just want our path colour. So we'll use that as the base of it. And the yellow as the top. Now grab your fan brush or a flathead brush. Whatever you're happy with doing something like that as we're coming forward. We're going to make that sort of path, okay? See, this is a flow paint, so it's probably got not a lot of body in it. And I want to sort of come, I don't have too much on the brush at the beginning there. And I want to create a road. So I'll, I'll map it out with this first. And we'll put a road about here. And because it's getting closer to us, you want it bigger. So there's our road, okay. So let's start getting him a bit bigger. Yeah, this is a... I'm not too happy with this paint, so I'm not going to use this one. Use yourself a yellow oxide. Yeah, look at that yellow oxide. Stick to the devil you know. Better the devil you know than the one you don't, eh? We just learned ourselves a lesson there. Well, I did anyway. And we're creating our path. Look at that yellow oxide. That's beautiful. Yeah, 
you want the edges sort of feathered because we're going to create some shadow come a bit thin all the way back there okay so we're gonna create some feathery edges and they can sort of go jigsawy as well so this is no retarder in here but I'm not going to dry it because when I put the yellow on I would like the yellow to sort of bleed with it in some way okay so just get this on the best way you can I'm sort of see what I'm doing I'm treating my edges to the finish I want so I'm brush stroking them out to there get some thickness there and just brush stroke it out try not to lose that shape of your path though so it stays in perspective with your horizon all right that'll do I've just cleaned that brush and I'm picking up my cadmium mid yellow and I want to sort of bleed some of this into that path. We're getting a caramel colour. Okay. And we can also, if we want, put a bit of white up there. Wiping my brush now so I can blend all this there we go look at that oh there's too much white there I don't want too much there if anything you want the white in the horizon line not back in the foreground play with this see how you go muck around with the paths before you do one and then when you're putting one into your painting and you're incorporating it the right way but anyway, that'll do. I want to wipe that brush and see here. I just want to come from the middle and bleed them out a bit. That's it, look at that, nice and scratchy. Okay. <laughs> going to go with our yellow green and our sap green Australian sap green or sap green whatever you've got all right so we'll get these two colors onto the palette here and we're going to start with the darker of the green I want to stamp that in first get my lay of the land and then we'll go with the lighter green so I'm going to use my flathead brush here and pick up this green, sap green, stamping it, get it right over the horizon there. And the idea with this is to create the, this can go in front of the path for there. We're going to virtually create that sort of pattern in our dark background leaving some darks there can you see that beautiful now I've got that to there now I'm going to sort of bring these along this way this is this is what creates the shape of your hills when you're laying all these down because I want this to sort of spear in leaving some black and spear onto the track there like that so I'll work my way from the track side first leaving some blacks in there so it creates depth in your footpath or your dirt road whatever you want to call it you can have anything there this is just the subjects we're using in the picture if you're referencing from something it doesn't have to be exact you can do your own type of road now we're going to get all this in there like that see as I'm starting to do it's starting to look like 
big umbrella shapes. Move your brush around so you can keep that natural lay of foliage that you're looking for. Whatever brush you got that works for you, use it. It's the best weapon you got when you've got a favourite brush and you know how to use it. See, now I'll change this into a hump there just by putting these on coming down there, but leaving some of the black to create that shadow. I've created, so in hindsight, it looks like we've got a hill and another bit popping up here. And when we highlight it with the yellow green, that'll really show what you've done. I'm just getting the, the lay of the other side done. So I'll, I'll keep it the track first. Kind of bleed it onto the track here and there in certain spots. So what I've done from that other dip is I've just come this way and then I'm bringing this one over just to create different lays so it's not one flat, even, boring hillside. It's got some artistic bends and shapes and curves to it, okay? All right, we're getting there with all the screen. So we're happy with our lay of the, let's just say the carpet folds. <laughs> anyway, now we're gonna highlight those with some yellow green. I've cleaned my brush, I'm gonna use the same one. Now, like I said, with this stamping on there, use what brush works for you. If it's a bit of tissue, if it's a toothbrush, if it's a fan brush, I'm finding my flathead brush to get this finish. I'm happy with that. Now we'll pick up this yellow green. Load your brush up. Now work it out. This has to be blow dried, so it's not gonna mud up. I'll get down into the footpath so you can see how those dark colors work. Leaving, if anything, the dark under the light. Always load your brush up the same way, so it's chiseled. Now, like I said, this is just going to create the lay of our land now. Creating the shadow, which is bringing this down there, creating a shadow. and then bring it out there. So I've created the shadow there. So it distinguishes the different shape. Now I'll just get this side. And done as well. You can see the difference from both sides how this sap green worked as an underlay for this yellow green. It's, it's created the depth. So just as habit, I'm going to iron it up to the path so I've got all that bit uniform and neat and even as I want it to be. And then I'll come and block in the rest of it. All right, getting that done, that's all pretty much finished. Now, what I'd like to do with this is get some yellow, the cadmium mid yellow, and we'll just highlight, we can let that mix with the yellow green, and we're gonna look at our sun source, so we'll work out where we want our highlights to be. Not all over the place, you don't wanna go stamping it all over the place, you want just certain bits highlighted, all right? Now we're getting some yellow in our yellow green there. Just enough to see the yellow green, and now we've highlighted it to this yellow greeny colour. Okay, now I want to start from the horizon and bring it from that hillside, sort of coming this way, like this way. 
in my mind. So I'm just sort of bringing these and now sort of fade out as they come forward. Try not to make these too big and fat. How's that looking in the monitor? That's looking all right. And then I'll hit the top of this one and down the caress of that there. I also want to highlight the bits dribbling onto the part, but don't overkill it. Just, just the littlest touch. Just some sort of hint of highlighting in there. Okay, we will get the same done on this other side. So this is behind the sun. See, I was nearly going to do that, but so if anything, I want to highlight this side of the mound here very thinly don't put big blobby stampy marks on it get the forehead of that done and then bring it back over to that hill there this is really defining the shape of your hills and mountains or whatever you've made with this stamping these different tones and colors on there okay so what we've done and now we'll start from here as well we'll get all this distant bit more lighter and of course the horizon line because it's virtually shining on the whole horizon line there and then we can participate this down just a little bit there and mainly all here because the sun's coming down the crest the valley the path whatever you want to call that bit there Getting there. Probably sprinkle some little bits here just where there's some high ground might be. And of course back down here. Now what I'm doing, I've still got some of the flowing white left without cleaning anything. I'm going to get a bit of that and see the different tone I've made with that green again from that to this. I want to just do the minimal highlight with this now and if anything it's mainly near the sun just so as it's a lot lighter in the middle there I'm not going to come everywhere here like the top of here it's just hitting here And up here. <sighs> now I pretty much think we'll call that it. You can put some like fencing in there like they have in the picture I've used. You can make the track a bit more detailed. But for a beginner, simple subject, I'll just put an autograph on this now. Where can I sign it? I'll sign it over here. Alright, now we'll whack a frame on that and see how she looks. There we go, we've got our fire sky. We've got our fiery sky in the background and we've got some simple mounds or dunes or moors with some certain bits of highlight there in our attractive little path in the middle, okay? That's not too shabby. Be sure to share, like and subscribe to my videos and my channel here. And if you like what I do, you tell a friend. But if you don't, tell everybody, all right? All the best to everybody. Goodbye, good luck, and good on ya!